example three. Uh, on Thursday, we did this matrix. We did the spectral analysis of this matrix, 1, 5, 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 4. As a matter of fact, on Thursday, we, we had the geometrical background for such a matrix. It was a matrix of a projection map. And for the projection map, we just discovered some nice shortcuts when you do uh, spectral analysis. But it's irrelevant for the present consideration. What's relevant is that what exactly the eigenvalues and what exactly the eigenvectors. So on, on Thursday, we found two eigenvalues, 1 and 0. And uh, the associated eigenvectors were like this. For value 1, 1, it will be this B vector, which gave rise to the projection map, 1, 0, 2. For the, for the zero value, we found two eigenvectors. One of them was like this, and the other one was like this. And that is actually the big difference in this case. It's a huge, I mean, in comparison to the previous example, in the previous example, we had three times three metrics with only two eigenvalues. And we weren't able to diagonalize that. Here, we will be able to diagonalize the matrix because we have, even though we have two eigenvalues, we have three eigenvectors. It means that actually I can, if I index my eigenvalues, I can call this eigenvalue 1, I can call this eigenvalue 2, and I can duplicate this eigenvalue and call it eigenvalue 3 in conjunction with my vector 3. If you look back at the, my diagonalization presentation on the second slide today, I never said that the eigenvalues are required to be distinct there. As a matter of fact, what is required is that having as many eigenvectors as a dimension and so that they, they are linearly independent. We have a high, I have a high suspicion that these three vectors, they will be linearly independent. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact we, we saw that these vectors are pairwise orthogonal. So they form what I call you, what I call, what I earlier called the orthogonal system of vectors. Such systems they are always linearly independent. So in this case, thanks to having three linearly independent eigenvectors, even though the eigenvalues are not, we don't we don't have three eigenvalues. Thanks to having three linearly independent eigenvectors, we will be able to diagonalize. Here it is, my D will be this diagonal matrix. You see, I duplicate my zero eigenvalue. If you want to see the conventional look of the D matrix, it's a very simple matrix. It has only one non-zero entry, like this. The rest of the entries are simply filled with zeros. But it's still diagonal matrix. And my P matrix is just consists of these three vectors as columns. So it's a negative uh, 1, negative 2, 0 from the first row, from the first components here, 0, 0, 1 from the second row of components here, and 2, 1, 0 from the last row of components here. With this choice of D and P, we have semi-diagonalization relation, as before. And given, if we can see that P is invertible, so if we can see that these vectors are linearly independent, then we also, we, we also have complete diagonalization identity. If I want to see that the matrix is invertible, if I want to see the inverse of that matrix, in case 3 times 3 matrix, we no longer have a direct formula, but we have to, we, we have to follow the Gaussian elimination process, right? We have to build this augmented matrix with P on the left-hand side and identity on the right-hand side, which is this matrix. It's a longer matrix, but I have to write this. Here's my 1, uh, negative 2, 0, first row of P matrix. 1, 0, 0, it's a first row of identity matrix. 0, 0, 1, second row of P matrix. Uh, 0, 1, 0, it's the second row of uh, identity matrix. 2, 1, 0, it's the last row here. And 0, 0, 1, last row here. I fed this matrix to computer algebra system. I requested, uh, I requested for... Uh, redu reduced row echelon form, that's what this system, that's what the computer algebra uh, gave back to me. That's what the computer algebra gave back to me. 
from the look of this row edge lymphoma, I can see that because we have three pivots on the left hand side, because as a matter of fact, we have identity matrix on the left hand side, it means that my P is invertible, and the right hand side of this row edge lymphoma, it is exactly the inverse matrix we're looking for. That's how we invert matrices of size larger than two. It's the first semester stuff. So my P inverse is this matrix. It's just copy of this right hand side here, and my diagonalization is complete. I presented my diagonal there, a D matrix, I presented my P matrix, I presented the inverse of P, so not only my A, semi-diagonalizable, it is diagonalizable in the full sense of it.